All right, guys. Well, hello and happy Sabbath. Today we're going to be talking about birds. And uh, if you're a pathfinder and happen to be joining in, then it's good news because there are only two other requirements that you'd have to do for the pathfinder uh, honor. Um, there, it's very similar to the adventure one. So here we go. Oh, hold on, why can't I, there we go. Okay, here are the requirements. We're gonna discuss how God cares for birds, be able to recognize 10 different birds, be able to make five bird sounds, play a bird game, draw or color each of the following, two water birds, two seed eaters, and one predator, make a simple bird feeder, make a nest or a house for a bird, and to bird watch. Okay. All right, first thing we'll talk about is God's care for birds. It's really neat because uh, the Bible sometimes compares uh, how he treats us to how he treats birds. He mentions that if he cares for birds so much, how much more does he care for us? So we're going to talk a little bit about how he cares for birds. And one of the cool things about birds are their beaks. They all have different kinds of beaks. So we have up here, um, there's generalist bird beak, insect catching, surface skimming, mud probing, grain eating, coniferous seed eating, etc. I'm not gonna read all of them. I want you to look at them and notice that the different bird beaks have different purposes. So for example, the ones that are for digging in the mud or uh, which is what probing means to dig into something, or, um, they're long and skinny. The ones that are uh, for getting uh, food from the surface of water, for example, they have like a net in their uh, bottom part of their beak or surface skimming, those are also for, or filter feeding, those are all for um, getting food out of the water. And then, those who have to crack the birds who have to crack open seeds or grain or fruit or hard things they have different types of beaks okay so i want you to lift up one finger or two fingers depending on what you think the answer is let's see if you were paying attention to the different types of beaks so if you think that this bird is an insect eating bird then you're going to lift up one finger if you think that it's a raptorial bird, which means a raptor, you're gonna lift up two, okay? And we're gonna play a, a game using a few of those. But first I'll, I'll go back for a second and let me explain. For example, let's look at the toucan. It says he's fruit eating, but just because he has a fruit eating beak, that just means that's his specialty. That's a special gift that God's given him, but he can still eat other types of food as well. So it doesn't mean that that's all that that bird eats. It just means that's what they're really good at eating. They can, their beaks are designed for that type of food, okay? All right, now that you know what you're gonna do, we'll go back. Uh, let me see if there's any of these words that you might not know. So probing, we explained. Coniferous are conifers, so that would be like a pine cone, so hard. Uh, hard things that you would find in nature that they have to crack open to get the seeds out. Um, chiseling is like a chisel, like a, a small, like if you were hammering a nail into something. Um, scavenging, when you search around and find leftover things, uh, but that would include like bones, dead animals, etc. All right, ready? Here we go. So lift up your fingers. A one or a two? Do you think it's an insect eater or a raptor? Okay, I see a lot of correct answers. That's right, Jessica. We uh -oh. have many comments. It was. Yeah. So that's right. It was a raptor, wasn't it? Yes. And you see it has a very pointy beak. Okay. All right. Second one. Do you think that that's a surface skimming beak? or a probing beak? A surface skimming beak or a probing beak? If you answered probing, you're correct. 
it has a long thin beak so it can dig into different places and pull out what it wants to eat. Look at this cute little bird. Oh, by the way, this was a, um, that's a raptor. Uh, it's a, a type of raptor, so it's a falcon, a black falcon. And they have, we have those here in Scotland. This is a white ibis. And I honestly don't know what this bird is. I just thought it was so cute. I had to include it. Okay, um, so look at this beak. It's smaller, it's more compact. Do you think it's a grain eating beak or a filter feeding beak? What do you think, one or two? If you answered two, you were correct. All right, what about this, a toucan? Do you, does it have a dip, a netting beak that will hold things and filter it or a fruit eating beak? Let's see, I'll wait for a few more fingers. All right, it's a fruit eating beak. Now this is a very common bird here in the UK. This is a red crossbill. I'm sorry, the picture is a little bit blurry, but I wanted to show you how bright and colorful they are. Do you raise, this is one that you could see in your back garden, or if you take a, a walk in the woods or mountains, then you'll see this bird or can see it. Look carefully at its beak. Do you think it's a conifer seed eating beak or an insect catcher? Let's see. Dan, I can't see as many fingers. It is uh, a bit of a in the chat room at the moment. Uh, so uh, that is uh, uh, where we get our answers. Sorry, sorry uh, my mistake. Uh, one of the chat rooms was uh, off. Uh, so once okay. again, Jessica, uh, uh, for, okay, the, uh, the first answer came. Uh, it is number one, they're saying. That's right. Do you see how it's a uh, beak? The top beak crosses the bottom beak. That's so it can really chomp down and break hard shells and, uh, and pine cones and such. Oh, this is a bird that you probably have seen in your back garden. It's a very common bird here. Do you think it's a chiseling beak or an insect catcher? I'll give you a hint in case you're not sure what it is. It's a robin. All right. If you answered insect catching, you're correct. Yeah, and that's right. The, the answers came through. It's they called insect catching, and uh, many recognized uh, Mr. Robin with us. Awesome. All right. I'm sure you've seen one of these before. Do you think this is a nectar feeding? beak or a pursuit fishing beak? And for extra points, does anyone know what, what kind of duck this is? All right, if you put pursuit fishing, you are correct. And it is a mallard. All right, chiseling or raptorial. All right, we are uh, we're waiting for the comments uh, on the, in the chat room. Uh, so um, they're saying it is option two, uh, uh, some of them, and other ones are saying it is number one, chiseling. And so uh, you will need to help us, Jessica. It is a woodpecker. Does that help? What do you think, a woodpecker? Oh yeah, uh, now everybody's writing number one. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, it's a chiseling bird beak. Very good. And we also have those here in the UK. Last one, I believe. Is it a grainy eating beak or a nectar feeding beak? And this is the one of the fastest wing speeds in the world. A hummingbird. Yeah, and the answer started coming in, Jessica. And people are saying it is number two. Number two is correct. Very good. All right. The second way that God made birds very special is that he gave them different bones. Their, their skeletons are different from other animals. So I put one uh, diagram of a bird with his 
wings relaxed if he was all drawn out and the other one in a flight position. But I want you to take a look at our bones compared to bird bones. If you look at the bird's bones, they're, all, they're almost hollow inside. They just have a few ridges or a few uh, string-like bone structures. So they have very large pockets in their bones compared to our very small pockets. Uh-oh. So you can kind of see the difference. And you can see that with the ridges, some of the bones are completely hollow. They only have ridges. So this allows birds to be able to fly properly. It makes them lighter. And most of the time, birds' feathers weigh more than their skeleton. Isn't that cool? Okay, another way that God made them special was giving them very unique and different types of feathers. So here's a diagram. We're not going to go through all the different feathers. I just wanted you to see that there are many different kinds. Okay, and this is what they would look like the writing is bad, but the picture is not too bad. Um, so this is a wing feather. I want you to notice it has one very small side and the other side is twice as wide. The tail feathers are equal, the tail feathers are equal on both sides. Then under those you would have the contour and the semi-plume and under that the down. The bristles and the phylloplume, let me see if I can find, here we go, here's the, uh, the order of them. So you have the tail and then the flight or slightly smaller, semi-plume, phylloplume, bristle, and then the down is the part that keeps the bird the warmest. The tail and the flight are what keep, are usually water, water resistant, okay? And then the others are fillers. Okay, true or false? We're gonna talk about feathers for a moment. True or false? If you think it's true, you're gonna put a thumbs up or you can type T in the chat. If you think it's false, you're gonna put a thumbs down. Okay, here we go. Birds are the only animals with feathers. All right, good question. Let's find out. Do you think guys this is true or is this false? What do you think guys? All right, dancers are coming and they are going for false. Da, da, da. It's actually true. Unless you count dinosaurs, there are not any other creatures that have actual feathers. They might have feather-like structures, but there aren't any that have feathers in their true state. Okay, except for dinosaurs. There were a few dinosaurs that um, had feathers. Okay, swans have as many as 25,000 feathers. Does that sound bizarre or do you think it's true? 25,000 feathers. And if you do think it's true, are you sure that it's swans? Swans uh, were my neighbors, but didn't know they have that many feathers. Uh, so, uh, so the answers are coming. Uh, at the moment, I can tell you, uh, majority people are saying false. I just wanna ask you to write it once. Don't write it 15 times, just once, yeah? Uh, yeah. So, uh, so it is, it is well, uh, some people say now it's true. So Jessica, what is it? It's true. It's true. Swans, this common swan that we see all over the UK, it has as many as 25,000. Small birds can have up to 3,000. Eagles and all the birds of prey, like falcons and raptors, they can have up to 8,000. And hummingbirds have the fewest feathers of any bird, and it's only 1,000. But check out penguins. They have, they have to have really dense, warm, warm coats for the winter. Well, all year, really. So they have the most, about 100 feathers per inch. That's a lot of feathers, isn't it? Okay, true or false? Birds can feel their feathers just like human, humans can feel their hair. They cannot control each feather, only the wing as a whole. So just like you can't tell each hair where to go, it's saying that birds can't tell each feather where to go. 
So can they only move their wing or do, can they move each feather? Uh, Dayan, you're muted. Again, very mixed answers. Oh, sorry about that. Uh, some people are saying false, some people are saying true. So just can you help us with that? All right. Uh-oh. It's false. They act, birds, every feather has a tiny muscle connected to its follicle. It's as if, as if the roots of your hair had tiny muscles that allowed you to move the, uh, your hairs. Isn't that cool? Wow. So they can actually move their feathers. Now, they don't consciously decide which ones to move. God designed their bodies in such a way that their system reacts uh, just when they make certain movements or decide to do certain things. So they don't have to put command to each one. It just works uh, as a fluid system. Okay. Birds only need feathers for flying. Birds oh, well. only need feathers for flying. True or false? Again, Jessica, there is no uh, a unified answer there, but uh, I would say majority is again going for false. Okay, it is false. So feathers can also function as a type of raincoat. And it also protects their bodies from the, so from the weather, from the sun. Um, it protects them from things like thorns or insects. Um, it protects them from other animals trying to attack them. It repels water. So most of them, it's water resistant or even waterproof. Um, it also helps them stay camouflaged so that we can't see them sometimes. And it helps them look beautiful. Some of them have very colorful uh, feathers so that they can attract mates. Okay. All right. Uh, next thing we're going to talk about are birds' feet. They have, just like they have different types of beaks, they have different types of feet. So just take a look real quick at the different types. So for example, ducks, they have webs in, their, in between their toes. Hawks are very spread out. A woodpecker, it's almost flat. Ostrich, they have very lumpy feet that can uh, walk flat on the ground. Parrots' feet can't become straight. They're always slightly bent, okay? God cares for birds by giving them different colors, different sizes, different homes and habits. So I just focused on feathers and on beaks and feet, but he actually made them very special with every color that he gave them. It's for a specific purpose, um, their sizes, whether they're large or small, whether they can walk, whether they can uh, skim on water, whether they can dive, whether they can fly very high or they have to stay low. All of those things, the way they build their homes are all for a purpose. One of the things um, is how they travel, which is migration. Migration is when you, you move from one place, when you're tra traveling from one place to another place, okay, Repet uh, repeatedly. So if you look, you can try and find what, what part of the world you live in. I know most of you are from the UK, but some of you are from different places, and you can kind of see where the birds come in and out of your country from. Okay, there are only eight sections of bird migration. All right, well, the main ones. So you can just take a quick look there. That means that birds come to your country and then they go the other direction and, and leave your country. But wherever your country is, it's a flow. Then the birds travel to, to reach warmer weather or cooler weather and for mating purposes. Okay. Luke 12, 24 says, consider the ravens. They neither sow nor reap. They have neither storehouses nor barns, and yet God feeds them. Of how much more value are you than the birds? So the birds every day is a very tough day that they have to work very hard to provide, to find food, to make their homes, 
but they never worry because they know that God watches over them. Okay, I wanted to highlight a few UK birds. These are the top 10 birds that you're gonna see this uh, summer. Now, some of these birds are going to be a little less common because um, we had a lot of birds. I don't know if anyone had spent a lot of time at the beginning of quarantine, but you would have seen a lot of birds in your back garden. Um, now, here are the top 10 that you should see all summer still, and uh, you hopefully will be able to identify. So we have the house sparrow, the starling, the blue tit, which is very common, the blackbird, the most common, <laughs> wood pigeon, I'm sure you've seen those even in the city, the goldfinch, the chaffinch. Now, if you look, chaffinches are very po uh, popular as well, but there's the brown, which is the female, and then the pink one is the male. The great tit, which looks similar to the blue tit, but uh, it has more yellow and green than blue, and its face is a little bit different coloring. The robin, which most of you recognized, and then the long-tailed tit, which is uh, more just uh, pink and brown and black. Okay. Now I wanted to show my favorite um, birds to look out for while uh, my family and I, we go hiking and, and trail walking a lot. So at least once a week. So these are the birds that I like to look for when we go on our little woodland walks. The first one is the kestrel. Now kestrels are the only bird here in the UK and there aren't very many in the world actually. They're the only birds that can actually suspend themselves mid-air without flying. So that doesn't mean that they're soaring and it doesn't mean that they're, that they're, that means they're not flapping their wings. They're not riding any, uh, any thermal uh, air that is keeping them up. They're actually just uh, just staying in one place, hovering over the air. Isn't that cool? And if you can't tell, this is a type of raptor. Okay. Uh -oh. The second bird I love to look for if I'm near the water is the kingfisher. I think it's one of Scotland's and England's most beautiful birds. I guess I should say UK. I've only seen them so far. I haven't traveled extensively. So I've only seen them around Scotland and England, but um, they're really beautiful. And they're called the master divers because they dive down deep and get their fish and come back up. But they have really beautiful coloring. Another one is the golden eagle. This is always a special one to look out for. And even though uh, I will say the first time I saw one, I was a little bit disappointed because I expected them to be very golden, but <laughs> they're more of a gold uh, shimmery, a few gold shimmering feathers, but they do have a lot of brown and they also have black and white feathers. And if you look, uh, this is what the underside of their wings look like when they're flying. And I just wanted to give you a size comparison so you could see next to a woman about how big they are. They're quite large. Okay, this is uh, the common crane or the gray crane. And they're a lot of fun to see. This is the UK's tallest bird. It's the tallest bird that you'll find. And they're quite elegant looking. And uh, you'll often see them in the water or standing in the middle of a stream, for example. That's where they fish. But they're quite fun to watch. And of course, these aren't found everywhere all over the UK, but they're still one of my top five favorites uh, for birds to look out for, especially on the aisles or, uh, well, they're only in a couple of places, but they're a lot of fun and they're so cute. They're the puffins. And obviously they live near the water and um, they do fish, they catch fish, but um, their, their beak is a little bit deceiving in that, in that respect because they don't have the typical 
um, uh, dipping or probing beak, they had the skimming type beak. Okay, if you want to hear different bird sounds, I wasn't sure about how the sound, if it would glitch through the, um, through Zoom or through Facebook. So I'm just giving you the website that you can go and you can actually review, you can listen to all the different UK bird sounds and then you can test yourself and they have like a little bird sound quiz and you have to see if you can identify the right sound and that's one of your requirements is to be able to make five different bird sounds. And this is what it looks like, bird song identifier. Okay, and then next time you're out in the back garden or on a walk, hopefully you'll be able to recognize some of them. And they also have a lot of bird games on that same website and animal games as well, but they have feathers that you can see if you can identify different types of feathers, um, what, they, what the birds eat, etc. All right, another requirement is building a bird feeder. So I wanted to give you different options, show you different uh, things that you could, bird feeders that you could make out of things that might be put into your recycling bin or something that you play with. So here's one made out of Legos. Here's one made out of a, a carton, uh, probably a smaller milk carton or sour cream or something of that nature. And then they just put little twigs on top and in the front. This other one is a tin can and they folded it down so that the birds couldn't be cut by it and then put some uh, string wrapped around it. So those are all ones that you probably have something similar in your home that you could use to make a bird feeder. And here's some other ideas. You can use just fruit such as um, carving out a grapefruit or an orange and then you can fill that, uh, use a string and sew it, sew it through there and hang it in a tree and fill it with bird seed. And then you don't have to worry about any trash being left behind. You can dip, um, you can dip different things in peanut butter or roll them in peanut butter and then uh, the peanut butter will allow the seeds to stick to the outside of them like this toilet paper roll. You could, I'm sure everyone has toilet paper rolls at home <laughs> that they could, they could use. And uh, this is another tin can or a bottle. Uh, and then they used uh, spoons to st for the feet. That's the toilet paper roll one. As usual, we would like to encourage all of our adventurers to uh, uh, send us pictures of these. Uh, some of them are much easier to make, some of them are not so easy to make, but the reality is that uh, we all can do a little bit of that craft. Uh, and so uh, please do send us the pictures uh, as we said in previous session and we, we, we publish the photos on Wednesdays. So try to send us that for Wednesdays on my email at dan at adventist.uk. And the sooner you make it, you can hang it outside and then you can try and catch a picture of a bird eating off of your bird feeder and you could send in a picture of that as well. Yes, yes. Okay, and um, here are some other ideas. You could do a, a bagel, that circle one is a, ha a bagel and they put peanut butter and then dipped it. Okay, or another carton, they made it look like a bird. <laughs> Okay, another thing you can make are bird houses. So I wanted to show you a few that you can make with um, simple pieces of wood, just squares uh, and maybe one piece of wood cut into different uh, squares. And then I'll show you some that you can use from recycling. So this would be an example of an easy one to make out of wood. It only has um, uh, six pieces that you just have to nail together. And so I'm sure that an adult could help you measure that out. Here's another example. This is the same design as the other one, but instead of it being nailed to a tree, they're hanging it from the back side, which makes it look like a triangle or a diamond shape. This is one made out of a milk carton. And so look, they hot glued different pieces of, um, twigs and grass and straw and things like that. 
to make their birdhouse, you want to keep the hole quite small because even if the bird is larger, it will squeeze into the, to the birdhouse, but it makes them feel more secure and safe from the rain and the wind and predators, okay? This is what, if, you're, if you see a teapot maybe when the charity shops open back up, a cheap teapot, or maybe your mother's has a crack in it and she doesn't want it anymore. So instead of throwing it away in the rubbish, um, you can put it uh, inside a box or glue it to something and use it like a birdhouse. Okay, if you maybe instead of building a birdhouse, maybe you want to help them build nests. So some of the things you can do is collect different things from outside like twigs, leaves, grass, feathers, uh, bark, pine needles, and small pieces of string um, about the length of your hand or smaller. And you can put those in a pile and you can offer it to the birds and they will come and they will grab what they want to build their special type of nest. You don't want to put any plastics. You don't want to put aluminum foil, aluminum, <laughs> um, any sort of tinsel or cellophane or anything like that. Oh, you can even put hair. I know that sounds gross, but you could empty out your hairbrush and put that in there and they can also build a nest with your hair. So this is an example of, you can just get some wire and wrap it around and stuff it with different things. You can put it in a pile and leave it on the ground somewhere for them to come and get. You can put it in cages like any um, old used kitchen appliances, like a whisk. You could stuff the whisk with different things that I mentioned in that list. And that helps, birds have to work very hard to make a nest and sometimes their nest gets destroyed quite easily by different uh, weather elements or sometimes different birds come and sabotage and attack their nest. So this will give you a chance to make the bird's life easier. And if you have things in your back garden that makes it easy for them to build nests, they're more likely to build a nest near your home, which is fun because then you can watch. Okay, another thing to do was bird art. So I'm gonna show you a few examples. You can draw a very simple bird, okay. You could make colorful, bir detailed birds and uh, different designs. You can color bird picture that's already printed for you. And again, Jessica, uh, uh, we would love to see these. So uh, yes. we had some amazing, amazing um, uh, uh, artwork and, and crafts done by adventurers and pathfinders. And so guys, make sure that you do, do, do this and take pictures and send us, yeah? Mm -hmm. And the more you can put, the more textures and colors and different materials you use, the, the cooler it's going to look. So this person used a plate and paint and scraps of paper and little feathers, googly eye, and then they added things from outside. You can make um, different types of imag uh, birds that are imaginary, for example, or that you can use to walk around and play with. This is a pastel picture of a bird. Okay, and if you look on Pinterest or on Google, there are many other ideas. Those were just some of my favorites. Okay, we're going to play a game. This will be our, um, oh, I went so fast. I was afraid of running out of time. So I'll go a little bit slower on our game. <laughs> it's not from at all, Jessica. Uh, whenever you finish, it's all good. No problem at all. <laughs> okay. All right, so this is our, our bird game. So this will be our last requirement for your honor. Okay, so you can type in your answer and each little dash represents a letter. And I tried to pick birds that have to do with here in the UK so that you can know more about your UK birds. Ducks are also called blank because they are normally found in places where there is mainly water. So there's ducks go by another name here in the UK, not just here, but all around the world. Uh, so <laughs> our chat is open and, and are we trying now to, uh, so let's see what comes out. So what's another name for ducks? 
and they have this name because they're usually found near water. Okay, all right. Uh, uh, Jessica, nothing coming at the moment uh, on the in the in the chat room. Okay. Uh, oh yeah, no, no, nothing that we. Uh, yeah, Jessica, help us. <laughs> all right. So maybe you've heard this term and you didn't know what the person was talking about. So now if you hear it, you'll know if someone says waterfowl, they're talking about ducks. Oh, Jessica, my apologies. Uh, there was a first, the first, uh, the first answer came as a waterfowl and then a few others came through. So adventures, well done. Uh, sorry, I didn't see this on time. So this is my favorite waterfowl here in the UK. Isn't that a beautiful duck? It's called the Mandarin duck. That's the one, my favorite to look out for. Okay, a blank is the fastest animal on the planet, reaching speeds over 200 miles per hour, and they usually live around 15 years. So the fastest animal on the planet, what bird do you think this is? All right, uh, uh, some people uh, went with the fastest animal, uh, which we uh, uh, learned in one of the previous uh, uh, honors and awards. But uh, okay, so some people are saying uh, falcon, eagles, a um, uh, few, well, uh, ostrich, uh, quite a few different answers. Jessica, what would be the correct one? So some people think that, for example, the cheetah is the fastest animal in the world, but it's actually the falcon. And here is my favorite falcon, the peregrine falcon. And you can see these here in the UK. They have a slight bluish grayish tint to them. Sometimes they just look dark gray, but they're really beautiful to watch and they can fly over 200 miles per hour. Isn't that crazy? Okay, here we go. Blank are active at night and can turn their heads around 270 degrees. So they can almost turn their heads almost all the way around. This one, this one was easy for adventurers, like everybody knew it seems to me. They're saying it's owl. Oh, are you sure, are you sure? They're not giving up, they're saying it's owl. <laughs> you are correct. <laughs> I was hoping I'd be able to trick someone. This is my favorite owl. Does anyone know what kind of owl this is? It's very common here in the UK. No, I, uh, you need to know that this owl was also uh, present in the presentation of the birds on a uh, 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 part finer honor. So uh, uh, it is called a bar barn owl. That's correct. That's correct. And you can identify them because if you look, their face kind of has a heart drawn around it. So they're also known as the heart-faced owl. They they do have um, they have the brown and golden orange in their feathers, and when they open up though you might see them and think that they are solid white. Okay. This is a very intelligent and social bird. It's sensitive and its head changes colors depending on its emotions and stress levels. Humans can actually hurt this bird's feelings and it changes colors. So they're very intelligent and very social. And I think this one's going to really surprise you guys. Okay, so uh, they started writing down that it is parrot. It's not a parrot. Keep, keep thinking. Okay. This, is, this will surprise you. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, they're saying crow, crow. Uh, there are um, other people mentioning eagles, <laughs> hawks, doves, uh, and now all other birds coming through. So Okay, I'm going to give you a hint and then we'll see if it makes it super easy. If, see if you can guess it. Many people eat this bird. It is a commonly eaten bird. 
But think about it. It changes colors. Its head changes colors. All right. The so Facebook audience is saying it's a pigeon, turkey, chicken. Everybody just jumped on chicken right now, straight away. Uh, okay. Uh, if you said turkey, you are correct. Well so done. So tur turkeys, wild turkeys, here's what they look like. Their throat and their heads are a little bit strange looking to me, but they really are quite beautiful and they can puff out. And depending on the type of turkey, these are pictures of UK turkeys, but turkeys around the world sometimes have some green, some red, some uh, blue in their feathers. But look at the different colors, the different shades of their necks and their heads. So the top right picture, is when they're not really having any emotions or there's no stress, for example. But turkeys actually bond with people. So if you've ever had a turkey sandwich, I just want you to know that turkey's feelings were probably hurt. It was definitely <laughs> hurt, but it definitely bonded with you as well, just to let you know. So it's, 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 uh, it's not maybe fun. You had a special bonding moment. <laughs> So their, their heads can turn purple, pink, red, blue, and even a almost white color. And then if you look down at the bottom, some turkeys are white. And depending on their age, depends on some, some of their coloring. But as you can see, when they really uh, spread out all of their wings, they look quite large and then and quite different from when their wings uh, and all their feathers are back in place behind them. Okay, and that was actually my last slide. So we'll see if you guys have any questions. All right, guys, uh, if you have any questions, uh, you think that through. Uh, but before that, you would like to say thank you uh, for your presentation. So guys, if it's possible, prepare to uh, uh, give a big clap to Jessica. Uh, uh, I'm going to unmute the mic now, so allow you to unmute the mic. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.